armament the scramjets carry are beam weapons, high energy lasers similar to those currently being researched for missile defense. The stage has been set. For the first time in history, two pilots will duel to the death at the very edge of space. In the year 2027, two scramjets are about to square off in the first dogfight to take place outside of Earth's atmosphere. What happens if we go on out into space? Then we're into a whole new realm. What does that mean in terms of fighters? Well, if you're going to have two space planes duking it out in Earth orbit, we have to change a lot of things because physics rules out there no different than it does in the atmosphere. Tactics instinctive to pilots for nearly a century are suddenly obsolete. Orbital mechanics, not aerodynamics, govern the maneuvers. The way you can think about being in orbit is a rock on the end of a string because you move the rock fast enough the string stays taut and the rock stays out there if you quit swinging the rock falls then the same thing happens to a spacecraft that if it slows down it falls towards the earth the only way it stays in orbit is to maintain a minimum speed if it speeds up it'll go to a higher orbit the american scramjet carefully maneuvers closer to his adversary Jockeying for position in orbit is slow and deliberate, a far cry from the turn and burn dogfights of the first 100 years of aviation. But the results will be just as lethal. The Americans' only weapon is a high energy laser the most plausible weapon for a space plane to use. Recoil from conventional weapons like guns or missiles would drastically affect the scramjet's position in orbit. The American finally positions himself for a shot. The laser charges. He fires. The invisible beam arcs out, boring through the enemy scramjet's engine. The laser is not strong enough to burn through its tough outer hull, but it doesn't need to. As the scramjet decelerates, he drops into the atmosphere. The friction of re-entry superheats the aircraft. The tiny surface damage near the scramjet's engine cracks and opens. Soon, the entire vehicle breaks apart. For the American, victory is bittersweet. As he watches his enemy burn up in the atmosphere, the frightening implications of warfare in the future are all too real. From here to the very edge of space, to the traditional dogfight taking place in Earth's atmosphere, the nature of air combat has changed. The air combat situation doesn't become less complex, it becomes more complex. Now you have more variables. So you ask how it'll change, it'll be everything they've done in the past and more. The dogfight was forged above the trenches of World War I, when pilots first stepped into canvas and wire biplanes and took to the air. Its golden age came 30 years later, when incredible, powerful, piston-driven fighters clashed over Europe and the Pacific. in Korea and Vietnam. Jets drove dogfighting faster and higher.
and guided missiles opened a new world of tactics. The modern age of air combat has seen astonishing leaps in technology. And there is no reason to think this progress will be slow. But in battles waged higher and faster, in ever more complex machines, the courage and savvy of the fighter pilot is one thing that will never become obsolete. Regardless of the degree of autonomy, regardless of the degree of sophistication in networks and architectures, a pilot is still a pilot. There will always be a need to fly aircraft aggressively and capably against other aircraft. And there will be dogfights in the future. It's, it's guaranteed exactly how long they will last, who they'll be with, what the outcomes will be. Those are all up to the participants. And the pilots of the future may not look and may not think exactly the way I did, but they will adapt, I am very confident.